Yo, what is going on guys? This is Mr. Loki. In this video, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be making a fun video, a tier list uh, video, and we're going to be uh, discussing all the characters in Predecessor as of January 14th, 2023. And uh, yeah, again, this is just for fun. This is my opinion. Um, I played this game for around 120 hours, I think. I think that's on my Steam, which is a fair amount of hours. And I'm a Kalari player. I will have timestamps in the video for all the heroes because there's only like 20-ish heroes. So it's it's kind of easy to make the timestamps. So let's get into it. So let's get into the first one, Crunch. Uh, Crunch is very strong. He has a lot of damage, utility. Uh, he has everything. Um, the only thing he doesn't have is CC immunity. <laughs> he, has a, um, he has a CC chamber can knock you up and constantly bash your head in. Um, he has two escapes. He can dash twice, basically, with his ultimate. Um, he has self-healing. He just has everything. He's a little oppressive, especially after level six. I do think he needs to be toned down a little bit. No matter, uh, no matter even with the recent nerfs for him, it doesn't matter. He just has more abilities than you because he can spam uh, his base, ba base kit very quickly, especially with Mutilator and whatnot. It's kind of just disgusting. Maybe it's Mutilator the problem, but all I know is that he can CC you to death, and I think that's really unfun. And it's just kind of, uh, he's a strong character. He's a nerf. Okay, next is Decker. I think uh, Decker is a B tier character. Um, very hard to use. You got to know how to place the, the wall properly, the double, know how to when to jump, double jump, uh, know how to juke with the double jump, learning how to land the ball stun. And he, she's a difficult character to play. A little bit more difficult than, say, like Steel or whatever like, those characters are, right? Um, so I, I think that sh uh, she's good in the hands of the few, but requires a lot of practice, a decent amount of practice and, and knowledge. So. Next is Drongo. Drongo is a solid ADC. He has escape. He has a silence. He's very good. I don't think he's broken because he's. An, I don't think he's like a problem like Crunch or whatever. Like I, I think that he's tolerable. Like he's squishy. He can die just as fast as he can kill you. So I think it's it's a little fair. Um, but I I overall think that he's not he's not a like god tier. He's not trash. He has an escape, silence, free damage, a lot of damage actually, and good wave clear if he needs to. So nothing you can't go wrong with drunk. Next is Fang. Uh, we're gonna put Fang in C. I haven't seen a lot of Fangs, but whenever I do, they don't they don't do play that well. He's kinda hard. He's very tactically. He, you, have to, you have to play around with his teleport and know how to auto cancel with him. And his ultimate is like really bad. His ultimate uh requires Emmy to be a below certain threshold, and that's not that great because that forces you to play very limited. Uh, whereas the enemy can use their ultimate whenever they want so it's kind of a disadvantage um i do say it's a great last hitter obviously but do you really want an ultimate that's dedicated for last hitting i don't think so i would much rather have like a cc ult that does a bit less damage and it's i don't know i just don't think it's that great next is Faye. i think Faye is b she's uh i think the only thing that makes her really good is her ultimate her base kit, I think, is just terrible. It doesn't, you can just walk out of it. It doesn't really do a lot of damage. And uh, she has no mobility. So, no escape sign. So, it's very easy to shut her, just to run her down and kill her. But her ultimate, oh my god. Once she's six, she's a monster. When she ults you in a fang, t in a fang pit and hits more than three people and then combos that with her base kit, it's very good. But without her ultimate, she sucks. If without her ultimate, I would put her at D. <laughs> but her ultimate bumps her up to B. That's how strong it is. Um, so yeah, but it's still, she's hard to play because you gotta learn how to, you gotta learn how to survive the first six levels and also learn how to survive when you don't have your ultimate. Next is Gadget. Um, I think Gadget is A. Um, she's kind of like Faye a little bit, but a little better. Um, she has a lot of, she has AOE damage. Her base kit is good and her ultimate is even better. Um, so she has, uh, she has survivability with the passive and free shield. Her escape is pretty good. She doesn't have a teleport or anything, but she can move really quickly and she can root the person who's hacked. I think the root's a little strong. I think the root should be if you walk past the trap, not just touching it. She is excellent against melee characters. They can't reach her. She has great wave clear, great poke. Overall, really, really good hero. Uh, I don't know why people think Gadget's bad. I, I think she's pretty good. Next is Gideon. Gideon is uh, A tier. I don't think he's busted because his alt is very counterable. Um, if he ults, you just CC him or you just kill him because his ultimate, while it is pretty strong, it's kind of not that great in the early game. It's it's really strong in, a, in like when everyone's distracted. But if you're ulting kind of and if you're ulting and, and the whole enemy team is kind of focusing, you, you kind of just die, right? 
Um, so you have to be very knowledgeable and know when to use your ult. That's why I don't think he's S tier because he does require a bit of skill with knowing when to use the Gideon ult, whereas compared to most people, just ult for no reason. Um, so he also has to kind of use his only escape to reach to the point where you can't melee him. So that's kind of like, okay, if I survive, you're still dead because you don't have escape. I don't know. I think he's overall good, not amazing, and he doesn't, and he's not there. Okay, Grux goes to S. I don't really, I think we can mostly agree that Grux is a little overtuned. He has CC, he has a small escape, and he has healing, and he has, he has everything. His bleeds are insanely st strong. He is a great 1v1er. Um, great team fighter with this free pull CC. He does everything. He's a cheese character. This this predecessor is right now is an early game meta where Fang Tooth is the only thing that matters. And getting the getting the third Fang Tooth is really strong, and Grux helps that very much. So level two cheese, level one cheese, level three cheese, just constant ganking as Grux. Not even really farming, just running around, just killing everyone. Very strong character, oppressive. I think Howie is S. He's the best mid lane in the game. He's too strong. I think he does way too much damage. He um he has great mobility because he can knock you back while knocking himself toward his tower. On top of that, he's ultimate, which does bazillions of damage. Probably the hardest hitting ultimate in the game. <laughs> um, it will rain down death to your face. All while he's comfortable and safe up in the sky, unless you're a hunter, but he's just pretty much safe up there for 90% of the heroes in this game. And there's nothing you can do about it. On top of that, he can chain his ultimate with his rocket launcher to stay in the air longer <laughs> while hitting you. And there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, he also has these mine things that are very good at slowing you down. He's just a great character. I think he needs a bit of nerf on the damage. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna put Chimera B. Um, he, he's only at B and not like C, it's because he's good in the early game and that's what really matters. Besides that, anti-heal kind of counters him really hard. If, whenever I see a Chimera, I always build anti-heal second item. Um, it shuts him down really hard where he can't really regenerate and, um, he's a melee M1 character, so any crowd control kind of pushes him off. Now I am aware that he is, he has an ability that makes him immune to all CC. But that, that ability doesn't last too long, and there are ways to dance around Chimera. I don't think he is terrible, but he requires a bit of, I think, knowledge. Like, you can't just do whatever you want with Chimera without being punished, but he is a great early game character, and that's all. But, like, he falls off so hard. <laughs> you have to build him Bruisery because how kind of, like, not great he is. Whenever an assassin has to build tanky, because they know they can't do assassiny things later on. That's kind of a problem, right? Like Chimera is like a wannabe assassin, but he's like played like a warrior kind of. So it's it's a little awkward. He also has no escapes. If he gets caught out, he's dead. So that's another fun thing. He's an all-in character. Kind of the reason why he's not that great. Okay, Bellica, we're going to put her at C. I don't ever see Bellicas, and I think there's a good reason for it. She doesn't do anything in the early game. She's a great mid laner. But she's not, she has no mobility, so she can't rotate that well. And she doesn't offer anything in the early game. She's a single target, more or less, damage dealer that's designed to brawl with you over the span of minutes to have your mana reduced to kill you. That's not useful in the early game. And that doesn't really help much in the fang, like fang fights, right? So I don't think she's that great. Um, she's, she's probably S tier if the game is end game oriented. But besides that, I don't think she's that great. Next is uh, Murdoch. Uh, Murdoch is A. I think all hunters are pretty much okay. Um, I do think Murdoch is one of the worst versions, though. I think he's kind of like right here because his kit is too safe. He's very strong in the early game because of his ultimate. Getting free kills for setting your lane is pretty nice, especially when it confirms the kill. So I do think Gideon, or not, did I say Gideon? I mean Murdoch. I think Murdoch is uh, really strong in the early game. Very defensive unit. Very safe. If you're a new player, definitely pick uh, Murdoch because he can push the enemy back, root, and uh, he has a self-healing thing too, which is pretty nice. So I, they, they, this character, this character is definitely the worst. I think I don't like, I think, I think Drongo and Sparrow are better, but uh, Murdoch is still overall pretty decent enough. And um, his weakness though is again, late game, he doesn't really do anything but hold left mouse. 
So he's very defensive. That's the problem. Okay, Muriel. Muriel is going to be at C. Uh, the only reason why she's not in D is because her shields are actually pretty nice and her ultimate is very strong. If anything, if you don't agree with my shield statement, at least acknowledge that she has a really strong ultimate. Her ultimate gives barrier uh, for everyone around that person you're selecting and knocks all enemies up dealing mass, actually a decent amount of damage. Um, Muriel is pretty strong. Also, her early game is very powerful too. Um, like the first few minutes, I mean. The first few minutes, Muriel can 1v1 pretty much almost a, a lot of characters because her passive, her passive is very powerful in the early game. But it falls off like in mid game. <laughs> it's so bad. This character is weird. She's like a wannabe mage ADC but she's a support. She's also very squishy and she's like a backliner support and she has no crowd control. That's a slow. Uh, she needs a buff or a rework, I would say. Make her a mage ADC. Just ma don't make her a support, make her a mage ADC. That'd be so cool. All right, Narbash is going to be in B. I think Narbash is pretty good, but he's kind of hard to play, right? You have, you have to learn how to synergize with his or, or the, the tempo with his like his healing and his speed up. And his ultimate is a little hard to use. You have to learn how to use his ultimate properly because you stunned out of it. Um, but I think the main reason he's not anything lower is because of his on-demand stun. His on-demand stun is very powerful. If any time, like unlike Muriel, right? Every, every, every time someone goes on you, you just stun them and they just can't do anything about it. It's so good. But he is hard to play because his base kit is literally difficult to use. Rampage is A. Um, he's not like a Grux or something, but he is pretty strong. Um, he's a supportive jungler, so he can't hunter and zero you with like, you know, compared to, you know, Kalari or something like that, but he, he does, uh, he's pretty good at, because he has stuns, right? He has a stun, he does decent damage, and on top of that, he's kind of unkillable. He can just run out of your back line and do whatever he wants. Now, he does become weaker the, the longer the game goes, uh, simply because anti heal exists and auto attacking people uh, and killing them through time becomes less relevant in late game because everyone just does a million damage. So, uh, Rampage is not S, but I think she's, I think he's overall okay. I, I don't think he, you know, needs any changes, really. He's okay. Okay, Richter is S. This character is busted. Uh, he pulls you and you're dead. That's how that works. If he pulls you, you're dead. If he doesn't pull you, um, nothing really happens unless it's a very crucial moment. Like, if you're in laning and he missed his pull, you just, you just, nothing really happened. At least based on my experience. So, um... He's very powerful. He pulls you, he silences you, he stuns you. He has a lot of crowd control. And on top of that, he does like half your health in a combo. So um, yeah, he, he, he's very powerful. I think they need to nerf his damage or nerf his CC or both. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think this character needs a bit toned down. Uh, Sev. So Severog is actually B. So this character is really lame. Like the definition of lame, like not lame as an insult, but he he doesn't lose, but he doesn't win. Does that make any sense? Um, he's very safe in the early game. Uh, he has a great escape. He's like super tanky. He's like a tankiest character, right? Um, but he doesn't really do much besides that. He can like half health you and then he just auto attacks you down with, with like two damage because he's a magic. He's, his autos are um, physical. <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't do that amazing. He's a very simple character. Um, but he, he's, uh, his ultimate is also like really hard to you. Um, and there's a lot of times where Seth just ults the enemy toward their side, favoring them. Like, oh, thanks. Thanks for the mobility. Like, it's kind of like, why do you just ult for no reason? Um, and it's kind of like, when do you ult a Seth? Do you ult a Seth when you're about to die? But that's not a good ultimate. You're only using it when you're about to die. Um, do you use it to finish people off? But then it's just like a crappy Fang Mao ult. When do you use, uh, her, his ultimate? Now, in a team fight, you know, you use it this to displace the enemy's carry, right? Whether it's their jungler, their ADC, or their mid. You displace one of their carries to be out of the team fight just for a few seconds to give you a breathing room. Or if like everyone's grouped up, like it's a great supportive ability. If everyone's like clashing on your steel or something, you can just like bonk everyone out and spread them out, right? It's it's a strong ability in very niche situations. But that's why that's why he's not a I think he needs a maybe a rework. I don't know. Because I feel like if they just keep buffing his numbers he's just going to beat you because he just has bigger numbers than you not because his kid is good okay next is sparrow i think sparrow is a um the only reason why she's not an s is because she has no mobility she has no escape so she's pretty much free food if she steps out of the tower line 
Um, so most Sparrow players uh, who are smart, they typically play safe, uh, especially if there's like a Clary in the enemy team, right? Um, so, uh, but she's very, she's kind of killable, uh, but she hits really hard. She's the hardest hitting hunter, I think, in the game. Um, very great carry. If you have someone that can protect you, like a steel or really a re any 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 backline support kind of maybe even narbash right narbash can camp sparrow um so she can do her thing very powerful um uh, but again her only weakness is she has no mobility besides that she, her damage is excellent she does what an adc needs to do and she can 1v1 a lot of hunters and her ultimate is so nice just massive spread damage okay next is steel uh, do i need to explain this I don't think I do, right? This character is uh, really dumb. He has ins he has good dam decent damage. Um, he has a, like the longest one of the longest CC chains in the game. Uh, stun, knockback, knock up, back to back, and it's it's insane. He he has he's one of the best team fighters in the game, and one of the best peelers in the game, and initiator. He's too good. He also has the ability to drop a wall down to block all hunter shots. So if you if you're fighting someone and you can just you can just drop a shield to force the enemy ADC to walk closer or walk around or walk through the shield, which is so great. Like you just completely disable the enemy hunter from the from the whole team fight. It's if, if you place it properly, of course, but it's so strong. I love it. It's I love the shield, but I hate his other kid. <laughs> he's, he's an annoying prick. Next is Kalari. So I think Kalari is um, I think she I think she's at C because she's she requires a lot of effort. But because I play her really well, I'm biased, obviously. I think she's B. Um, I think I don't think she's competitively viable, but I think a very good Kalari player can make her work in ranked in casual, but not like esport. I don't think Kalari's good in esport, but I think Kalari's pretty good in in a situation where not where there is not a um, five man stack or when you know when people don't use comms or something because Kalari relies on stupidity. Uh, or not stupidity, um, ignorance, or even oblivion. Like, they rely on the enemy to be oblivious and, and, and kind of relies on the enemy to make mistakes. That's what she does. Uh, she's similar to Loki, like Smite. Not competitively viable. Or I'm, I'm talking about pre-Loki, pre not the rework Loki. Um, not competitively viable, but good in the hands of the few who use them in ranked or whatnot. Um, so maybe like Shaco too. I don't know. I don't I don't know the, 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 the meta for Shaco right now. But... She is hard to play because you have to learn how to auto cancel, knowing when to stealth and knowing um, knowing when to ult in and ult out and knowing how to use your ultimate. Even I kind of struggle using the ultimate a little bit because it's kind of hard to hit, especially when it doesn't like bounce. It just kind of bonks your head like Mario, like just bonk. It's kind of weird. It feels not fluid, um, but um, learning how to land your daggers. You got to be able to land all your daggers or you won't be able to kill much. Um, she's definitely strong. She's probably the she's she's the highest damage dealer in the end game with with ma malady stacks um, because she can just one tap you. Uh, but typically early game matters more, so uh, her early game presence is okay. She's a good gank, but again, wars destroy this character. If you ward in the lane, there's nothing you can do about it as Kalari. If they if if, if, if the enemy is sieging your tower and they drop a ward around them. You can't do anything about it. You're completely useless. All you can do is E and throw and throw daggers from a distance and do some poke damage, um, and hope that there's no Narbash in the enemy team to heal it back up. Um, so it's it's okay. Or if you just want to go all in on one person and just kill yourself afterwards, <laughs> you can do that. You can E uh, E ult and then kill them with your necks or something, and then pray to God you'll live. <laughs> that's how that's how you could work. But again, it's a one for one character. Uh, I don't know. Su is suicide bombers great? I don't think so. So I think there's a lot of weaknesses to Kalari. Um, but again, if the enemy is incompetent or if you're a really good Kalari, she pops off. Okay, last but not least, I think, uh, no, definitely least. I th Okay, so I think Countess is, she's, I think she's the worst character in the game. <laughs> so this is probably, I, I, left, I left her last because I knew people are going to like disagree with this. Most people disagree with this. Some people heavily disagree with this. Uh, Countess, I think she's the worst character in this game offers nothing and I, you should never play this character there are so many reasons why you should just not play this character um let's let's talk about those reasons the first thing is she's an assassin but she's played like a mage that's weird she's also designed to she has to snowball she has to snowball to actually deal a lot of damage she doesn't one shot you surprise at level six or level seven she does not hundred and zero you 
she has to poke you down to a threshold to where her base kit and her ultimate will kill you. That's not a great kit, especially how she's a close quarter character. Um, she she has clear weaknesses, no crowd control, none at all. She has zero crowd control. I mean, she has a slow in her Q, I, I, but that's not that great. Um, considering that her abilities are AOE, she doesn't even really need that slow. Um, or ranged, I mean. Um, her ultimate is very predictable. You can cleanse it and step to the side and fully ignore the damage. Did you guys know that? Did you know that if you cleanse the stun on Countess, you have to do it quickly. You have to cleanse it and step to the side. You take zero damage while she's still stuck in the animation. It's really bad. Um... So if you're a hunter, you can cleanse and just press S key or whatever and walk away and then she doesn't do any damage to you and you can just kill her. Um, her damage is, again, she requires a snowball with a kit that can't snowball. Does that make sense? Um, she's very difficult to play. She has no mobility. Like she, Her Q is not an escape, guys. She can't Q to her tower. She has to Q to the enemy and then dance around them and then teleport. Like that's how, people, that's how Countess players do. They Q the enemy run one direction and if they're chasing them they queue back but any like you can't really fall for it too much if they especially especially when it gets predictable i mean what you can do is if you're being ganked by two people there's really nothing you can do about it. one person stays behind the other person chases so you're always going to lose out uh very easy to fight her um her healing her healing her healing is strong in the early game i'm not going to deny that but it falls off considering you can build anti heal on top of that her passive is terrible her passive is uh, lifesteal for getting kills. Countess doesn't really get kills in the early game. <laughs> and she offers nothing in a team fight. What does she do in a team fight besides damage? Why why pick why not just pick Kalari at that point? Kalari does a lot of single target damage, but can also help with her ultimate in a team fight. Countess is a single target character that focuses one person and her ultimate only hits one person. I think this character is completely terrible. I know some of you guys think that she's busted or whatever, but I just think most of you guys are not good at the game. <laughs> I, whenever I see a Countess, I farm her, I make sure she's negative, and I counter build by getting rushing Tainted Blade second item. I make sure she isn't a problem. And it's easy to do so because her early game is not that strong. Her, she's definitely a late game oriented character. But maybe she is amazing if it was a late game meta, but it's not a late game meta, it's an early game meta. Um, so, and if you play her in solo, you, we don't, there's no tank now. Countess goes full damage. If you play a solo Countess, there's no frontline anymore. If you play her in mid, you don't have a, a Howie anymore, <laughs> right? So, I think this character is bad. I think she either needs a full rework or a buff, but I, I, I buff to the point where she's an assassin jungler. Don't make her a mage, make her a jungler. Uh, make her where she goes in the jungle and actually kills people. And again, I know a lot of Countess players are going to understand what I'm about to say right now. Have you ever had a moment where you just full dump your kit on someone and it's not enough and you're, I have like one HP and you auto attack them and it still doesn't kill them because your autos are so weak because it's physical? Yeah, so that's another problem. When you play Kalari and you dump your kit, you still have follow-up damage. Countess does not have follow-up damage. So, and that, I've seen some Countess players building like attack speed, like something really trolly, attack speed or... Like it's funny that almost every Countess player has a different build because they don't know what to build on this character to make it work, <laughs> right? It's uh, I, all I know is that Spell Shield, I think that's like the only core item you should build on Countess and then and, and, and Oblivion Crown, right? Everything else is like random. Uh, maybe Astral too, like those are the three core items. Sometimes people build the Combustion, some people build Mega, some people build like um, they are the, the, uh, the Hydra's Lament item where you, the next auto deals bonus damage and so it just every almost every counters build has like different items where it, and you might think that's a good thing it's not because the people don't know what is best for her because people when people are trying out so many different builds on a character it means because they can't make the character really work so they're trying out different things um so it's it's i don't think she's great i think she's a rework or a buff uh, or a buff shift like make her a jungler not a mage right and that is it i hope you guys all enjoyed um, I feel like most of you guys are going to agree with like the top here and I think some of you guys may disagree with this one in particular and that's fine if you guys really disagree with my one please don't diss my tier list because of one hero disagreement I feel like most of you guys will agree with like the top uh but yeah if you guys don't agree with Countess some of you guys think is S I don't think I think she's a pump stomper right so if you think she's an S tier character you're probably bad at the game 
<laughs> that's just my opinion though all right so hope you guys all enjoyed and i'm gonna call it here let me know what you guys think down below i will read all your comments let me know what your thoughts are and i hope i see you guys uh, next time all right take care stay safe and peace